Welcome, fellow explorers. My name is Christian Alexanderson, and this is Hemlocks to Hellbenders, a podcast highlighting Pennsylvania's parks, forests, and great outdoors. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Ohio Pile State Park. Located in the beautiful Laurel Highlands, Ohio Pile State Park is the sort of place you take people you want to impress. The park has something for everybody. It's got waterfalls, it's got views, it's got boundless outdoor activities, and it is set in one of the Commonwealth's most beautiful natural landscapes. But before we get to the interview, here's the stats. Ohio Pile is a 20,500-acre park located in Fayette County. Available activities include hiking, picnicking, camping, whitewater rafting, fishing, hunting, wildlife watching, biking, mountain bike riding, horse riding, rock climbing, cross-country skiing, sledding, and snowmobiling. A notable feature of the park is the Yawkeganey River Gorge. Ohio Pile State Park gets its name from the word Ohio Pele, which is believed to be derived from a combination of Native American Indian words, which means white, frothy water. Nearby towns include Ohio Pile, Farmington, and Chalk Hill. State parks that are close by include Laurel Hill, Coozer, Laurel Summit, Lynn Run, Laurel Mountain, and Laurel Ridge. You may enjoy the park if you enjoy breathtaking views and countless outdoor activities. I'm excited to welcome Patrick Martin and Barbara Wallace to the podcast. Patrick is an assistant manager, and Barbara is an environmental education specialist at Ohio Pile State Park. Thanks for joining the program. Thanks for having us. How would you describe the park to somebody who's never been there before? Um, well, I would say uh, Ohio Pile is, you know, a, every part of Pennsylvania was set aside for a specific reason, and the Ohio Pile was set aside to preserve and protect the Yakagania River and its gorge and the species associated with it. So we have 15 miles of the Yakagani River that flows right through the center of the park um, and then the gorges that surround it. So it's a headwater stream in the Ohio River Basin. It's the very tippy top of the Ohio River. Um, so it's a wild, scenic, absolutely beautiful, um, pretty much fully wooded um, older forest. So beautiful class one to four whitewater um, flowing right through this really um, pretty cool scoured out gorge with um, a really resistant rock type that forms uh, ledges everywhere. So you get to see waterfalls all over the park, not just on the river, but on the creeks that flow into it. In the spring, if you hike here, you can pretty much see a waterfall on any trail you go on. So um, a, just a beautiful little slice of Pennsylvania. <laughs> This is a question for both of you. What do you love most about the park? Myself, I love the diversity of it. You, you just, whatever you'd like to do here, you can do. You can ride your bike, paddle the, the river, you can uh, rock climb, you can hunt, you can fish, cross country ski, snowmobile. There's just a little bit of everything here to do um, in all the seasons. Just the feeling you get when you come here and you sit along the river or along one of the creeks. Um, this place just kind of gets under your skin. And once people visit here, they it, it's just a place that is like no other and just there's solace to be found here, which, you know, in this day and age is is really often hard to find. I, I'm just honored to get to come here every day and enjoy this amazing place. Is there something everyone should experience when they visit? The center of Ohio pile here is is the borough and our, our Laurel Highlands Visitor Center is situated right here at the Ohio Pile Falls, uh, right, um, pretty much in the borough, but outside of the borough. It's a weird dynamic, but um, you know that's that's a destination in itself. I think um, amongst there, there's a plethora of things here to, to view, but that's a, a one-stop shop. You can see the waterfalls and come in and get a little bit of the history and and um, do some interactive uh, stuff here in the visitor center. How about you, Barbara? Do you think that there's uh, something just everyone has to experience if they if they visit Ohio Pile? I think around the borough of Ohio Pile, there's a couple of amazing waterfalls. Cucumber Run has an amazing waterfall called Cucumber Falls. There's the Meadow Run natural water slides, and and Bachman Overlook are all kind of right around the Ohio Pile area. So if, if people just have have a day, um, that's kind of you know, the go-to starting point. But the great thing about the park is that it's, you know, it's 32 square miles, it's over 20,000 acres. So even on our busiest days, if you can get away from that 
core area, you really can have the place kind of to yourself on some of those more far flung trails. We have over 80 miles of hiking trails, so it's kind of, you can find a place where you're not going to see thousands of people. I think one of the unique things about Ohio Pile is the fact that it's hard to separate the town from the park. If you go into the town, you go into the park. If you go into the park, you kind of go into the town. It, it, it's not only beautiful, but also very convenient for travelers who are going to be coming in. It is, and people often don't even know that there is a difference. <laughs> they don't yeah. realize that there's a, a little town, right? You know, the, the park completely surrounds uh, the town. So it's kind of like this little tiny little microcosm and people don't realize that we're not outfitters and we're not, you know, all the services that they can get in the town, you know, you can, you know, get a place to stay and rent bikes and rent rafts and do all that stuff. And that's all in the borough um, concessionaires and, and folks in the town. So it is, it is kind of unique. There's only a few other places. I know Harper's Ferry is kind of similar to that. If you, if you've been there um, along the train route, it's, you know, it's a very unique, and I think Peninsula in, in the Cuyahoga Valley is like that as well, where, you know, it's kind of cool though, because, you know, it's, it's a finite area for the town, um, but you still have all those amenities that, that you can get while you're here. Let's say a visitor has a full day to explore. They're going to be planning maybe uh, a weekend or a full day trip. What do you recommend they do? If they're planning ahead, they ought to get on the river or on the bike trail, you know, other than those, you know, things you must see. If you've already done the must-sees, then I think those are the two, you know, you really can't experience this place without getting on the river. I mean, you can, but it just adds that next level of, of really getting to know the place. Patrick, if a visitor on the flip side only has a couple hours, maybe they're checking out Falling Water, which is not too... Uh, far away, or maybe they're just going to come down from Pittsburgh. If they only have a couple hours, what do you recommend that they have to do? We always recommend that it's a nice little loop trail, takes you over through the Great Gorge, go over the high bridge there so you get the, the nice panoramic views of the Yakagani. The Great Gorge Trail has got some 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 larger larger trees on it there, and um, then it brings you over to, to Cucumber Falls. Um, so you, you sort of get a little bit of everything in it. That loop, you can leave the visitor center and be back at the visitor center. It's just, you know, maybe an hour and a half or so. So it's, it sort of gives the uh, the visitor a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything. You know, they're walking on the bike trail. They're they're seeing the views. They're seeing the waterfalls. Um, they then can end at the visitor center and walk through there and, and get that experience as well. Now, I'm sure you would say there's never a bad season to visit the park. What would you say is the best season to visit the park? Oh, I would say there's a bad season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say if you can come, um, no, you're right. There, There's different things. It depends on what you want to do. Um, but if you in, are coming in the summer, if you can avoid the weekends, that's the time to come. Um, but if you're, you know, I, I think this time of year, if there's snow on the ground is kind of a, a little bit of a secret gem. Um, we've got great snow. Um, so we have like just all the winter activities you can think of. The fall and spring are great because they're not as busy. Um, we've got great wildflowers all over in the spring and the fall, of course, you know, is perfect weather and beautiful leaf changing, you know. So really, yeah, every day is, every day is a glorious day in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> The shining jewel of the park is the Yawkeganey River Gorge. Is the best way to experience it during whitewater season? Yeah, I would I would say that is the best the best way to experience it. You know, even if you're inexperienced, there's uh, you know four outfitters here that provide um, some some high quality uh, guides to take you down and navigate that so you feel feel safe. And like Barb stated, I mean that's the best way to see the wildlife. Uh, you're, you're getting that, that that eagle that's following you the whole way down. You, know, you get to see the fish on the side. It's just, you know, it's very tranquil. It's just, it's, it's really nice. Can you tell us a little bit about the Fern Cliff Natural Area? The Yakigani River itself is just, and the gorge is really unique. Um, it's a northerly flowing river. So um, the headwaters are in Maryland and West Virginia. And before the days of a dam, the seeds that the river collected were kind of deposited in all those places where the river turned like sharply and water slowed down and seeds would drop out. So Ferncliff in particular 
is a peninsula. So there are lots of twists and turns in the river to go around that peninsula. And coincidentally, we're also the deepest gorge in Pennsylvania. And uh, that steepness makes this little microclimate. So those Southern species of plants um, are able to grow here. It's just a little bit of a temperature variation and it allows those plants that normally wouldn't grow in Pennsylvania to grow here. And in fact, a lot of them don't grow anywhere else in Pennsylvania, but here uh, because of the presence of the dam. And, and one of the places um, where that's kind of really exhibited is on Ferncliff. And Ferncliff has been kind of a special area um, for quite a while. So there's also old growth there. Um, and that was one of the seeds that started the park. So in the late 60s, uh, Edgar Kaufman, who owned department stores in Pittsburgh and was the original owner of Falling Water, um, was talked into buying the peninsula because it was gonna be developed. In fact, they were gonna put an amusement park on the peninsula. And um, actually the station agent at the Western Maryland Railroad started a letter writing campaign because she just thought that was terrible. And she got the ear of Edgar Kaufman um, and he ended up purchasing the peninsula because this had been kind of his summer playground for him and his his wealthy, the wealthy folk of, of Pittsburgh. So it had been preserved as a park for a while. And the park is pretty young. It's, you know, originally dedicated, the, Frank, the Falls area is dedicated in 1971. So another woman named um, Mrs. Albert Keister, who owned the Cucumber Falls area and about 600 acres along there, she talked Kaufman into starting Ohio Pile State Park. And that was back when, um, back when Project 70 was happening and people, Pennsylvanians were really putting money into parks and we were one of the first Project 70 parks. So the seed of it was the Ferncliff Peninsula, which just has been seen as having these really cool, unique plants. It's got old growth. It's, it used to have an old hotel. There's a lot of cool stuff. You can still go visit the ruins of the hotel. Um, there's a wayside there you can check out, but it's just, it, you know, if you've not, you know, typically in Pennsylvania, when we think old growth, we think of our, our friends at Cook Forest who have, you know, these towering hemlocks and white pines, which we have some of that as well, but we also have old deciduous trees. So when you're walking on Ferncliff, you're seeing these just giant oaks and tulips and, and, you know, just that we're at this place in Pennsylvania where four different forest types come together. So we have this huge variety of tree species. Um, again, we have that Southern, those Southern species coming here. So it's just, you know, it's just a fantastic place. And it was seen as so important and so special that in um, 1973, it was designated as a national natural landmark. So it's, it's a state park natural area, but it's also a national natural landmark because of all the unique plants that we have there. So it's, it's really, um, it's a gem. And, and if you're going to hike one place, if you can only go to one place, that, that Ferncliff Trail is really certainly worth checking out. One of the things I was surprised about when I visited Ohio Pile was just the absolute size and diversity of everything there. I took the Ferncliff Trail I, I, uh, and I was just blown away. I, I, I think a lot of people experience that if they don't plan a lot and they're just like, oh, I'm, we're going to go to the state park and we're going to have some fun. And then you see the size and how much everything, how much is offered at the state park. I think you're kind of blown away. Yeah, I think that's accurate. And I think, you know, the, the crazy thing is, you know, a lot of those things that we've recommended, you know, the little spots, the must see, must do things, that's basically like 500 acres of a 20,500 acre park. So that is like legitimately the very tip of the iceberg. So, you know, you can easily come here for two weeks and not do all of the things that you can do here. You know, you, you won't get all the trails. You won't see everything you can see. Um, it's just, you know, it's so everything here is just, you know, it's just the best. <laughs> A non-biased opinion, of course. No, of course, no non-biased opinion not. whatsoever. <laughs> the 150-mile Great Allegheny Passage has 27 miles of trails in the park and connects Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland. What sort of activities do you recommend visitors take part in when they visit? Preferably, we'd just like them to you know, keep that as a, a biking and a hiking trail for the most part. Um, but we do have some uh, some rock climbing ledges along the Great Allegheny Passage, and, and so the climbers will use the that trail to hike into those areas. You also get individuals that will do some some bird watching or whatnot from from the trail as well. But um, certain times of the year, you get people looking uh, for mushrooms, and uh, 
yeah, that's, I would say that's about, you know, winter time, uh, you know, you have winter activities, you can do some cross country skiing or snowshoeing as well. But um, that's about what we'd like to see limited to. How would you kind of describe the trail for people who are going to be planning on hiking it? Is it very difficult? Do you get to see uh, kind of some diversity of plant life? You, you, you do get to see a lot of rhododendron. Um, it's very beautiful, you know, in the, in the springtime when it's blooming. Um, and obviously you have the, the Yakagini River right there alongside you. So, so you get those views as well. It, in terms of difficulty, it's an old railroad grade. So it's, it's very, pretty, pretty much level, you know, one, 1% grade at, at the, at the most in some areas, I think. And uh, it's, yeah, pr pretty, pretty easy going for the most part. It's pretty much the only flat trail we have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ohio Pile is home to more than 25 miles of mountain biking trails. Where can visitors mountain bike? What's the level of difficulty? So we do have um, a few different areas throughout the park that you can mountain bike. Um, however, it seems uh, the most of the activity takes place up on Sugarloaf Recreational Area. Um, the Ohio Pal uh, Bike Club has developed a, a series of trails up there. Um, you can experience, you know, single track uh, to to some, you know, it, it, it's it's not too crazy difficult but there's some skill level there for for all all riders of skill levels essentially um so it's 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 nice you get some nice views and you're you're doing that single trek through that through the woods there so it's it's pretty nice but um yeah and i think that they're you know they're continued to expand their the the mountain biking trails here as well so that'll continue to develop i think here ohio pile is one of the few pennsylvania state parks that allows rock climbing what sort of climbing is available at Ohio Pile? We have, I think there's six designated climbing areas in the park. Most of them are along the bike trail or close to the bike trail. There's one exception, which is on Meadow Run. Um, you know, we, we ask that people stick to those six areas um, just because, you know, there are more rocks to climb here, um, but we, you know, want to try and preserve the, the natural areas, especially we have some, some unique you know, like the Allegheny wood rat likes to live in those, at those outcrop, the same outcrops that people like to climb on. So we kind of try and limit um, where people go. We also, um, a little lesser known climbing here, we have do get ice climbers here a good bit in the winter time, which is like really cool to see. Um, and the place that they typically climb is on Meadow Run, which is not far from um, the slides. They kind of go across there. So that's like a really cool, if you've never seen someone ice climb, it's, it's cool to see. And it's also like not a super far walk to watch them climb. Um, there are a couple other places where they do climb in the park that are more remote and take a lot of work to get to. Um, there's an old quarry in the park that that climbers sometimes go to. So, you know, that's that's one of those things that's like, it's great to have that opportunity here. Um, the one place we don't let people ice climb is on Cucumber Falls. And for those beginners and those people that are looking to, to, to get into rock climbing, that there are outfitters here in the borough that, that do offer um, uh, guided trips and so you can have a safe experience with them. For those of us that are looking for a less extreme visit, uh, do you have any suggestions for for really great views and vistas in the park? Yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, there are some that are located kind of in you know we don't want to give away all of our secrets. We want people yeah. to, to 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 come upon some of them, but some of the ones that are easy to access, Bachman Rock is is probably the most popular and the most impressive. Uh, so that's really easy. It's right off of Sugarloaf Road, um, kind of, it's about two miles from the park office here um, by the Ohio Pile Falls. Um, there's another great overlook if you go to the Tharp Knob Picnic area, um, pretty easy walk to get to, um, which, you know, you just do a little, you know, quarter mile walk up, up and you can see a really nice view of the gorge. And of course, you know, really easy um, beautiful views. Cucumber Falls is an is a no-brainer, and the slides are as well. There's parking lots right there. Um, the one caveat to that is, if you want to see those and it's the summer, you better get your car in there by, by nine o'clock in the morning, or you're going to have a walk to see it. Um, you know, those lots fill up. Uh, so I come by there at, on my way to work at eight o'clock in the morning, and some Saturdays the lots already full. So, you know, that's a that's a 
get here early if you're coming on the weekends, if you yeah. want a place to park. <laughs> and anyone who's been to Ohio Pilot will say, oh yeah, she's right. You gotta get here early if you want a place to park. <laughs> the state park is home to so many incredible animals. Uh, we've already spoken about a couple of them. What can visitors find if they're uh, exploring the park? Yeah, so um, I think we both can answer this. You'll, you'll see your, your typical, you know, everywhere from Pennsylvania, you get your deer and your turkey. Um, we just ran across the fox twice in two days the other day. Uh, it was pretty neat to see that red fox. Um, we have bear here, um, really good migratory bird um, coming through here. So bird watching is really good. Um, always a plethora of different, you know, eagles and, and uh, uh, raptors that as well you can view. I'm a bird person, so, you know, this is kind of, this part of Pennsylvania, we're on the first two ridges of the Appalachians, so we are right on the migra migration route, um, particularly in the spring, wood warblers, this is the place to come if you want to look for wood warblers, so if you're a birder at all, and, you know, people have expectations about, about seeing wildlife, and birds are one thing you can definitely see if you come yeah. here. Um, do We have lots of other things. We have fishers and otters and hellbenders and all those things, um, which if you're really lucky, you will see them, but there is never a guarantee about, you know, and part of that is because it's 20,000 acres. So, you know, there's lots of wildlife here, but it's also spread out and also very used to people. For example, we, you know, we have river otters here. They're reintroduced here in 1992 and 96. And our otters here are very nocturnal um, in behavior because there's so many people traveling the river, they kind of just hunker down. Um, the one other thing that you can really see if you're really into snakes, this is the place to come. We wow. are snake central. Um, it always amazes me when people say, oh, do you have snakes here? And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, yes. Um, we get them in our office sometimes. Yeah, yeah we have them in the office. Um, <laughs> so um, we do have snakes. We have two venomous snakes here. Um, very, very common. Copperheads are super common here, but also very uncommon for visitors to have interactions with those unless they want to. Um, you know, they're also very accustomed to people. So they hunker down when people, and, and surprisingly, some of our most visited areas have a lot of snakes, but people just don't, they just don't realize it because they're just hiding out and waiting for all the people to go away so they can go about their business. But if you're into snakes, this is a, absolutely a great place to come and look. I think you have equally gained and chased away several uh, visitors. <laughs> As I was saying that, I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to run away. <laughs> If you were to look at Ohio Pile State Park on a map, you would consider it maybe in the middle of nowhere. But when you arrive, you're kind of met with this adorable, charming town that's just as part of the state park as it is its own entity. What can people expect when they come to Ohio Pile, the town? There's not going to be any parking. Um... <laughs> No, I, I can. Ex I would expect them to, you know, have a few different options. They have they have options for food there. There's there's options for shopping. Overnight accommodations. Overnight, yeah. There's a, now with the Airbnbs, the the that's taking place. Um, they do a festival. They do a buckwheat festival in the in the fall. I think it's usually October. I think so. Um, that town hosts that. Um, yeah, that's. Outfitters. I mean, it, the, the good thing about Ohio Pile, and I joke about all the outfitters that we have, like you can pretty much rent anything in Ohio Pile. Yeah. So if you don't have gear, or you don't know what you're doing, you can get someone to take you out here. Like this is, you know, and, you know, this is the place where, you know, you can go safely because you can go with a guide to do just about anything, uh, especially those more high adventure activities. You know, you can always take a guide along, which is, you know, we certainly as a as as park and people who respond to injuries and, and accidents, like we want you to go with the guide, <laughs> you know, because because they're great. They know what they're doing. They're they're prepared for the situation, whatever activity that you're participating in. So um, the one thing that we do not have and is really important for people to realize there is no gas station in Ohio. Mm. 
So yes. before they, before you get here, stop and get gas. Yes. It's, not, it's like an eight mile drive, but you know, we get a lot of people cruising in on fumes and then it's like, oh, sorry, you got to go another eight miles. So that's the one um, amenity that we really, we really can't. Now, if you want ice cream, there's lots of opportunity. <laughs> but gas Dreamer, not, everybody but... sells ice cream <laughs> i would say make sure you plan out your trip if you have questions call the park or the outfitters ask those questions before you get here and like barb stated several other times get here early because it's no joke um parking is a premium here um and by by 11 o'clock in the morning, there are no places to park for the most part. Most almost all the lots on a busy summer day. Now, the fall, the shoulder seasons, it's a different story. Yeah, I would I would just reiterate what Patrick said and, and be prepared. Please don't go out without a map. Stop. If you're not stopping at one of our visitor centers, you know, pick up a map and, and, and familiarize yourself or people, you know, you can get them on, on your phone or whatever. I know a lot of people are, are um, going that route nowadays and just be prepared. Like, don't, don't go out without water. And, you know, all those basic things that, you know, this is, this is wild country. So you, you know, you never know how long that hike is going to take. Um, we, we love our visitors, but we don't want to see them in crisis. If you can do your best to be prepared before you head out into some of the more remote areas and that that's, you know, typical, anything, hiking, biking, you know, think about the worst case scenario <laughs> before you go out and kind of prepare a little bit for it. You know, we'll be there to pick up the pieces if you need us, but it's a lot better if, if you can be a little self-sufficient. We're really busy park. So, you know, we want, we want everybody to enjoy it, but also do it safely. There's one thing I would like to add to that. Um, cell phone coverage in Ohio Pile, depending on your carrier is non-existent. Um, in a busy summer season, the tower cannot accommodate all of the customers and your cell phone sometimes, even if you do have that preferred company, will not work. Um, so take that into consideration also when you're coming here that you might not be able to utilize those technical tech, uh, technology that you're used to utilizing out there um, just because, you know, it doesn't work. And that's a great thing if you want to get your kids away from their screens. They mm -hmm. have no choice here. No. <laughs> Spend a week away from technology here at Ohio Pile. That should be our new slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the questions I have. Thank you so much for speaking to me today. I know there's going to be so many more people rushing to Ohio Pile, well, hopefully before the parking runs out. <laughs> that's great. Well, it's our pleasure. Thank you for, for talking to us. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much, Christian. I want to thank my guests, Patrick Martin and Barbara Wallace, for joining the podcast. Be sure to visit our website and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more information about upcoming episodes. This has been Hemlocks to Hellbenders. I'll see you out there. Hosting, production, and editing by Christian Alexanderson. Music by John Sauer. Graphics by Uncle Traveling Matt's Random Expedition.